one of the most glaring apron oversights from the previous video has been rectified. Iteration, or trying again, taking it from the top, faster, more intense, as George Lucas would say, it's a really valuable tool as a character designer. The problem is how hard it can be to use. And I get it, it can be really tough to start over, to take another pass on a composition, a design, or a character. There's so many things that are working against that decision. The amount of time that you've already sunk into this thing, the development of sort of an attachment or preciousness that you have to the design that you've already made, and potentially the amount of time that you have left in this project. One way that I think it's helpful to think about iteration is as time in the oven. Yeah, there's certain foods that you can just throw in there, they warm up, it's not an exact science. But then you take something like a cake, which chemically changes depending on the temperature and the amount of time that it spends in the oven. But then what happens on all of these baking shows, right? They get a little hot under the collar, they succumb to the pressure, they take it out of the oven early, and they get a soggy bottom, which sounds like a, the most terrible of afflictions. The mixture is still liquid. So what is the correct amount of times that you should iterate on a character? Well, gosh, that's just so subjective. It all comes down to what's left to figure out on the character and how successful you've been so far. There's one pattern that I've noticed in my own work that depending on how many things there are, elements or designs that I'm trying to include in the character, the amount of stipulations and things that are riding on this character, the longer it ends up taking. What immediately comes to mind is the character of Aetius, who from a cast standpoint was the last Stormfeller to be designed. He had to complement and contrast three existing members from a shape and personality perspective, and he had a role to play mechanically that was unique. So going into his design, you had tall, top-heavy, non-leg locomotion if possible, that mix of folksy and tribal aesthetic I was trying to hit with this world, the storm cloud and lightning motif, and trying to include elements that echo the rest of the cast while being different. So trying to hit all of those notes and balance them well is just inherently going to take longer to figure out. I'm pretty sure Tay had like a visible level of concern when she saw just how many iterations on Aetius I had done in these early steps. The fact that he has the sort of hair tendrils, the mask that flips up and down, the giant hood behind him, and the fact that all of those change when he goes into a sort of different form absorbing the storm all add levels of complication to the character too. One of the best things that we can do as character designers is to distill and abstract those ideas into the design instead of including all of them very literally. The thing that happens then is that some of those ideas fall to the wayside or just exist more subtly in the final design. I actually have some practical tips for you on character iteration as a character that I've struggled with on and off over a couple of years has finally come together. It's a character that I've put a big red X over in the thumbnail twice. A lot of those same Aetius realities were present here, and I'd love to show you the process. So obviously there were a lot of elements in the past version of this character who was going by the placeholder name of Fauna. They're a mix of plant and animal characteristics, they're a mysterious and cunning archer, but there were a lot of elements all clumped together. In an older version there's like a convertible hood, she has double ears, there's coral-like hair, and a constantly changing face because I couldn't find something I was happy with. Apropos of nothing necessarily, my first practical tip for iteration is to only trace over top of something when you aren't really hoping to get a drastically different result. In other words, that base thing that you're drawing from is usually just going to stick in your mind and inform your decisions moving forward a little subconsciously. I go through a similar thing when I'm drawing over or redlining someone's work in a critique. I'm trying to correct something in the drawing, but the original drawing, even if it's sort of at half opacity underneath, starts influencing my drawing and I have to snap out of it and correct it. Your own designs can do that too. Their influence is strong in new drawings. If you really want something drastic, start over to the side of the original, and that way you'll have a much better contrast. With this Fauna character, I went back to this sort of Headmaster Cheetah version of her, which isn't bad, but felt a little too standard, and really tried to push the shapes into a really goofy or odd extreme. There was this sort of bean version that was fun, and then I thought, what if her arms were either really low or long to really accentuate that long neck silhouette? That ended up being really cool, and some of the sketched poses that come from it were really promising. That did end up meaning that we bid farewell to the Cheetah Headmaster.
But the good thing is that if you refrain from being too precious with your designs, you can always revisit that idea later, incorporate or remix it into a new design. They're never really gone if we remember them. After refining this sketch a little more, I got to a place with the body that I really liked, but the face and the starry eyes were still not doing it for me. And this is where a really powerful practical tip comes into play. I ended up leaving the head blank, and layer after layer made new interesting shapes for the face over top of it, not getting precious with any particular one. Some of them are straight up stupid or silly, but the variation that you get here, and fast, is way better than slowly sculpting and erasing one face little by little. I spent a little bit of time with that half-mask, starry-eyed face, but after struggling so much with the bottom half of her face, I decided to have no bottom of the face at all. This mask version really captures the feeling that I wanted with this character, and it's what I moved forward with. Sure, maybe this character has a couple of elements that I've used in designs in the past, but honestly, if the Property Brothers can use the same white granite countertop in every single kitchen that they redesign, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. W why do I even know that? From a color standpoint, and something that I'd love to work on in the future more with her, is a scheme that's seasonal and changes with the trees. So this particular version ends up being very autumnal and somber, while a springtime version could have cherry blossom petals and vibrant greens. From here, I just put together a standard illustration, something a little more rendered and set in a context that makes sense for her. From a story perspective, the character is a warden looking out for animals, and she's training an apprentice to eventually take over for her. She's a master of her craft, but there's also an element of her that's kind of avoiding some work that she should be doing, and she's instead thrown herself into guarding just one particular environment. I urge you, as hard as it can be to fight, try not to be precious with your character designs. Sometimes those early ideas are the ones that you go with, but it never hurts to keep trying and iterating. Just one quick glance at this channel over the last few years and you'll find a lot of slow burn designs. Characters that were iterated on over and over until they were something that I was honestly happy with. And frankly, there's a lot of times where improving your art skills is the thing that needs to happen before you're truly happy with a design. Oh right, the character's name, which you probably saw in the time lapse already, is no longer Fauna, it's Zonette. And Zonette is the subject of this month's trading card, along with a Quilver hard enamel pin. It's the new form of Biko's backpack, which is now $5 cheaper. It's basically a trading card and hard enamel pin of the month club, and you can get it over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. I have a couple of fun videos coming up that might be on the shorter side and might be released midweek, so make sure you're subscribed with notifications on to see when those come out. I might try something with YouTube shorts, but no promises on that yet. Oops, I forgot to ask you to comment. Why don't you tell me down in the comments below the least amount of times that you've most, the that you've most had it that you've iterated on a character since how many times that you've had to sound off down below and we'll tell you if you got the number right you can get my course learn character design over on learncharacterdesign.com it's over 18 hours of video learning a comprehensive character design curriculum and you can follow me at bagel Denizen on instagram twitter tiktok and twitch thank you so much for watching and have fun creating